today on Let the Bible Speak. Do we really need Bible authority for the things we practice in Christianity today, or does God leave it up to us to do as we see fit? We'll find out what saith the Scriptures next on Let the Bible Speak. From the Churches of Christ, Let the Bible Speak with Kevin Pressley. And a very good day to you. Thank you for joining us today for Let the Bible Speak. I say along with the Apostle Paul, the Churches of Christ greet you, and we're glad you're with us today. I want to consider a question with you that arose during a conversation between Jesus and the chief priests and scribes. They were angry at Jesus because He had gone into the temple and thrown out the money changers. And they saw that as a challenge to their authority. They came to Him where He was teaching, and they asked this question recorded in Matthew chapter 21, beginning in verse 23. They asked, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Well, this is obviously an interesting conversation. But one thing the Lord and these people agreed upon is that it was necessary to operate by God's authority. Now the scribes and Pharisees, the religious leaders, believed that Jesus was making unfounded claims and that He was blaspheming God. And Jesus knew that they were rebelling against God's authority by rejecting their own scriptures and substituting their own laws and false interpretations of the Old Testament. So the question was not, do we need authority? The question is, who's operating by God's true authority? By what authority doest thou these things, they asked of Jesus? Does it matter even today whether we have God's authority for what we say, what we believe, and what we do in religion, or has God simply given us liberty to do as we see fit? Well, if there is an authority outside of ourselves, how do we discover that authority? We'll study this subject in our lesson. We'll simply entitle, By What Authority? And we'll be back with that in just a moment. What an awful
The angry scribes and chief priests were upset because Jesus had thrown the money changers out of the temple. They came asking Jesus where he got the idea that he had the right to do that. They asked in Matthew 21 verse 23, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave you this authority? You see, they didn't want to admit that God gave him authority because that they would be admitting that Jesus' claims were true and that he was ultimately the Son of God and the Messiah. And they weren't interested in giving any credence to the claims of Jesus. They hated Jesus and they wanted him out of the way. But their question was a legitimate question. And Jesus didn't rebuke the question. Jesus well understood the importance of all things being done by the authority of God. And that's been the case in every dispensation and remains so today. In fact, Jesus promised to answer their question if they would answer one of His. And that was one of the Lord's most frequent responses to their oft-veiled attempts to entrap Him and make Him say something they could accuse Him with. He said, first, you tell me about John's baptism. Was it from heaven or from men? Now, Jesus putting this question back on them put them in a corner. Because uh, Jesus was asking, was John acting by God's authority when he went throughout the wilderness baptizing people in the Jordan, or was he acting on his own authority? Now, that put them in a tight spot, because if they said, from God, well, then they were acknowledging that Jesus was the Christ, because John himself declared Jesus to be the Lamb of God, sent by God to take away the sins of the world. But if they said that John was wrong, well, then they would be at odds with all the people because nearly everybody acknowledged John as a prophet and a messenger of God. So the scripture says they couldn't answer Jesus' question, and that brought the conversation to an abrupt close. But the question is valid in regard to anyone who claims to serve the Lord then or now. By what authority doest thou these things? Jesus did not criticize, and he did not dismiss or discount the question. Because Jesus himself cited the authority of God for the many things he preached and did throughout his ministry. In Matthew 7, beginning in verse 28, the scripture says, When Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He declared to the disciples in Matthew 28 and verse 18, All power or authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You see, Jesus would not have been the Son of God had He not been speaking and acting by God's authority. But Jesus not only made the claim, He demonstrated that His authority came from God. He healed the sick, He restored sight to the blind, He calmed the angry sea, He raised the dead, He fed the multitudes with a few loaves of bread and a few fish. It was all so convincing that the ruler Nicodemus said to Jesus in John 3 verse 2, Rabbi or teacher, uh, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. But it was not only necessary for Christ to speak and live by God's authority, it's necessary for us to do so as well. Peter said, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4 verse 11. And that means he is to only speak as God has already spoken. To only say the same things God has said. You know, Jesus said that he spoke as the Father told him to speak. And if Jesus could only speak by the authority of the Father, if he could only act by the authority of the Father, what leads us to believe that we can do things our way and we can ignore the Lord's authority and not seek His authority for what we say and what we do in religion. Peter said, whatever a man speaks, it is to be as the oracles of God or those things that God has already spoken, whether that be your favorite preacher on television or radio or whether it be the preacher in your congregation or whether it be you yourself, myself, anybody else. If any man speak, let him speak only as the oracles of God. But there's so very little emphasis placed upon authority today. In fact, we live in an age when men resent authority, whether it be civil, educational, domestic, or spiritual. The postmodern age has brought a rejection of absolute truth and the authority inherent within truth. And people therefore reject any authority outside of themselves and their own desires and their own opinions. And this has had a disastrous effect even upon religious people, even among the church. You know, for many years we've been told that it's what's in a person's heart not their adherence to Bible doctrine that matters. It's how it makes us feel, not what the Bible says about a particular subject. True worship has been reduced to uh, whatever draws the largest crowd or whatever produces the most excitement or gives the biggest thrill. 
as opposed to being as Jesus required in John 4 verse 24, in spirit and in truth. The Bible says those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And must is an imperative. But is God's authority as irrelevant and insignificant as some people seem to think that it is? Do we really want to live in a world that does not respect or recognize authority? Well, what if we had a society with no authority and no laws? Can you imagine the chaos that would ensue if there were no standards of measurement? What if you were to go to the gas pump where gas is advertised for so much per gallon, but it was left up to the owner of the gas station to determine what constitutes a gallon? Or say you wanted to buy lumber to build a house. Most lumber is sold by the foot. What if it was simply left up to the lumber business to determine the length of a foot? International atomic time is determined by a set procedure. What if we didn't have that standard to set our clocks to? Well, you might say we could get close given where the sun appears in the sky, but could you imagine in today's technological age what disruption and even chaos that would cause? You see, we recognize the need for authority in the everyday affairs and transactions of society, but then we want to throw that out the window when it comes to our relationship to God and say, well, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to be particular and specific. You know, the Old Testament book of Judges shows how God's people went through a dark period of anarchy and spiritual decay. And you read what happened in the book of Judges, and some of it is even bizarre. There's not even any logic to it. Samuel identified the source of the confusion when he wrote in Judges 17 and verse 6 that in those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. In other words, every man became his own authority. Well, that's what we see today. People shrug and say, it doesn't matter what you believe, or uh, having a sincere heart is all that matters. Just be nice to people, and that's all God cares about. If you feel like it's right, then that means that it's right for you, but what's right for you may not be right for me. And so we become our own authority instead of God being the source of authority. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23 says, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now stop and think for a moment about all of the things that people cite as their authority in religion and how these things really make them their own authority instead of them submitting to the authority of God as expressed within His Word. You know, some view their feelings as the authority. They say, uh, I know that I'm saved because I feel like I am. And you know, I, I, I just can't deny what's inside of me. Or I know that God accepts my worship because, well, it makes me feel good and uh, uh, I feel more spiritual and I can't see anything wrong with it. When two or more people are discussing matters of faith, stop and notice. Stop and notice how many sentences begin with, well, I just feel like or I think, and how few sentences begin with, the Bible says. You see, when your beliefs and practices are sincerely challenged, how do you reply? Do you really think something is subjective and changeable as your feelings or my feelings are an adequate authority in eternal matters? If you were to go out and buy an acre of land, what if the seller didn't have the property surveyed and he didn't give you a legal deed? Would you be satisfied if he just marked us off some spot and he said, well, I feel like this is about an acre. This looks about right to me. Would you be satisfied to walk away without a legal document and a survey and say, well, I feel good about that? Why will we demand more in insignificant earthly matters than we do in weighty and eternal matters? And then some say their conscience is their authority. They think that something within them will tell them if they are wrong. Just trust your instinct. And so they use this inner hunch as their standard of right and wrong. Well, the conscience is a wonderful thing that God created and placed within us to trouble us when we sin. But friend, the conscience has to be educated by something outside of itself. People who sincerely held to pagan religions throughout the millennia offered human sacrifices and did other ghastly things in the name of faith, did so because their consciences demanded it of them. And just because it's a matter of your conscience or my conscience doesn't make it right in the eyes of God. Even the Apostle Paul, once known as Saul, devoted his life to the persecution and extermination of the church of Christ before he met the Lord. And Paul himself testified in Acts chapter 26, verses 9 through 11, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them off in every city 
synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. He earlier in Acts 23 and verse 1 told the council, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Well, obviously Paul's conscience didn't always lead him to do right. It sometimes, in fact, told him to do things that were horrible, but supposedly in the name of God. And the fact that your conscience justifies or condemns something does not within itself make something right or wrong. Then there are those who believe that the majority should be the standard, that we should change as society changes, that the church just simply evolves down through time. And whatever the general consensus and the culture demands at the time, well, we must accommodate that, and that's what is right, and God will go along with that, God will accept it. But yet from the beginning of time until now, the Bible shows that the majority has always, always been wrong and not right. In fact, here's a very good rule of thumb. If everybody agrees with it, it's most likely wrong. If everybody agrees with it, it's most likely wrong. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 3 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. And remember that Jesus said, Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. So surely the majority can't constitute the authority in spiritual matters. And then some believe that tradition is the authority. That is to say the oral and written traditions of the church fathers, as they are called, that they should guide the church in matters of faith and practice today. In the 16th century, the Council of Trent met and decreed that the oral traditions of the church are to be received with equal piety and reverence as the Old and New Testament. And you know, many today believe that churches have the prerogative to interpret Scripture as they see fit and to add to it or make it up as they go along. Let me give you a few examples. Infant baptism is not found in the Scriptures. One of the earliest mentions of it does not appear in the Bible whatsoever, but in the writings of Tertullian nearly 200 years after Jesus built His church. You see, that's a tradition of men, not a tradition that Jesus and His apostles established. Many doctrines, ordinances, and sacraments practiced in denominations today are the result of humanly written creeds and the traditions of their church fathers. They don't find their basis and authority in the New Testament. Jesus said in Matthew 15 verse 3 that the Pharisees transgressed the commandment of God by keeping their own tradition. You see, the Bible doesn't condemn tradition. What it condemns is honoring the traditions of men over the traditions of God. What it condemns is treating man's traditions like the traditions of God. And Paul warned in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now let me illustrate the danger of using human tradition as a standard. What if I were cutting boards to build the walls of a house? And what if I used a tape and I measured the first board and I cut it? And then I used that first board as a guide to cut the second board. And then I take the first one aside and I took the second board and I laid it on top of the third and used the second board as the guide to cut the third. And then I used the third board to measure and cut the fourth and so on. Now do you suppose when I stood that wall up that it might be a little sloped, that it might be a little crooked? Well, if you know anything about carpentry, you know that it would. Uh, do you think one end of it might be a good bit shorter than the other end? Of course it would. Because you see, I progressively used a subjective standard. But what if I measure every board by the same standard? Now you see, the Word of God is the standard. And that's why all down through the ages of time, the church of Jesus Christ can be preserved exactly as it was instituted 2,000 years ago when this right here is the only measure, when this right here is the only rule. The only tradition that is to be our authority is that which came by Christ through His inspired apostles and thus can be found written in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 2, Paul said, I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances, that could is easily be translated traditions, as I delivered them to you. Well, what traditions was he talking about? The things he received of the Lord, 
The ones he delivered to them were the things that Paul got from the Lord. For he says down in verse 23, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. You see, the Word of God is to be our authority and our only authority in moral and spiritual matters. Now listen to Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. He says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now listen to verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, now that word means teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Well, there it is. The scriptures furnish us to every good or acceptable work in the eyes of God. And therefore, if they're not in the scriptures, they're not a good work. If the Bible doesn't teach it, it's not of God. If you can't find authority for your practice and religion, from God's Word, from the New Testament, it's not of the Lord. If you're doing things in your church today and the worship services of your church today that uh, you cannot read within the Bible, it is a tradition of man and not a tradition of God. It's not from heaven. It's from men. So I ask today, what is your authority? Were you saved upon God's authority or that of your feelings and emotions or the creed or tradition of some church? What about your worship? Can you read what your local church practices in the New Testament? And I mean that very specifically. Do they carefully follow the example of the New Testament church in doctrine, organization, worship, and edification? If you have doubts about that, we'd love to study with you and show you just how many people have rejected the Bible's authority in these things. Or is your standard what feels good, excites the emotions, or draws the biggest crowd? You see, Jesus warned us in the last day when we stand before Him to be judged. He said, The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge Him in the last day. John 12, verse 4 to 7. So it's a vital, vital question. By what authority doest thou these things? And I hope you'll sincerely consider it today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our past broadcasts plus extra videos including Let the Bible Speak classics all the way back to the 1960s. And get new updates, go to YouTube and search for Let the Bible Speak TV and click on subscribe. Our time is about gone. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you for taking this time to study the Bible. There are a lot of things at this hour you can watch on television or look, on, look at on the internet. 
and uh, you've chosen to watch this 30-minute time of Bible study and investigation, and uh, I appreciate that, and I believe it bespeaks your interest in spiritual and eternal things, and I hope that you'll pursue those things that we've studied today and all of the things that God has to say within His Word. If you would like a free printed copy of what we've studied today, we'll be happy to send it to you. Get in touch with us and ask for the lesson, By What Authority?, We'll have it on its way just as soon as we can. You can also find past broadcasts and transcripts at our website, ltbstv.org. So be sure to look that up. Be sure to follow us on social media. Subscribe to our podcast so you can listen on the go. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here, if the Lord wills, for another Bible study. Until then, I pray that you have a great week ahead. And may the Lord richly bless you. Let the Bible Speak is brought to you by The Church of Christ. For more information, including our past broadcast and sermon transcripts, visit ltbstv.org. Thanks for being with us today. Join us next time for Let the Bible Speak.